This is an OU INT 474E++ desoldering system. This is an OU INT 474A++ desoldering system. Hang on. Circumstance had it that uh, I was ordering two of these uh, desoldering pumps, one for home use and one for use at work, and uh, we ordered them from the same supplier at the same time, and we figured we'd get uh, two of the same units, but as you can see, that's obviously not the case. And uh, what's happened is that the one on the right uh, was uh, quality controlled uh, in 2014, whereas the one on the left was quality controlled in 2016. So there's obviously a two year difference between them. And I uh, would have uh, seemed to have completely revamped the insides of them because I can't really spot any similarities between the units uh, aside from the software. Indeed, uh, the pumps in the side can entirely different, and the case is obviously different too. So I figured we'd have a bit of a comparative look at these two and uh, see what differences there might be if this might be of use trying to hunt down an older version if the new one's crap or the other way around. So let's just fire them up and see what differences there are. I did go through all the stuff you got in the package uh, and uh, that all seems to be pretty much the same. The older one came with a slightly higher quality cleaning drill but beyond that the gun is the same the tips are the same everything else is the same so that's just going to be the pick of the chinese for whatever week the unit was manufactured so just looking at the outside of the unit uh, there, there are some obvious differences primarily the fact that the older one has the front panel mounted protruding out of the case whereas the newer one has it recessed and this kind of surprised me because uh, at work we've had a really cheap older station which was from China and uh, it had a case style very similar to this so initially I thought oh this has to be the newer one since it's different from the old Chinese one but that doesn't seem to be the case beyond the front panel we do have uh, the, this little rubber grommety thing on the newer one which isn't present on the older one and the older one has a much fancier handle Looking at them from the side, the new one has a couple of extra screws there and there which aren't present on the older one. And around the back, the new one is just really a lot busier with something quite obviously mounted back here. Which, where the, whereas the older one just doesn't seem to really have anything mounted to the back. We also have a different style IEC connector and a slightly different placement of a power switch, but nothing real major. You can also see the Waltex stick on both of these, confirming that they indeed both come from the official OU Europe dealer, so one of them certainly is not going to be fake. And if we examine them a bit more closely from the back, we will notice that the model stickers for both units are exactly the same. They're rated for the same power, they have the same model number, and so forth. And if we have a look around the underside of the unit, we can see that they've chosen an entirely different mechanical layout for the insides. Uh, the newer one has the transformer mounted in the back, with a vacuum pump in the front, and it's just entirely reversed in the older model. Uh, here is also where we have the quality control stickers which reveal the manufactured date. The older one being made the 8th of August 2014, and the newer one the 6th of May 2015. So they really aren't too far apart actually, they must have been switching the models quite rapidly just around the 2014-2015 mark. Anyway, let's just take these two guys and power them up and see if we can make out any actual differences in performance. Starting with the older model, let's see what happens when we power them up. Goes into the off state, I press that button and it's preset for 480 degrees. Heating up with about 76 watts. Let's just take it down a notch to make it go a bit faster. And it's taking somewhere around a minute for it to warm up. It's going to take a bit more time for it to actually warm the barrel up completely. And it seems to have gotten, gone into some kind of keep warm mode where it's just kind of pulsing the heater. So let's see if it's actually any hot. Yeah, we've got. Some pretty good heat going on there, so let's try out the vacuum pump and see if what kind of a noise it makes. Oh, there's some pretty good suction going on there. 
let's just take it apart and give the finger test. And yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty weak, I must say. It certainly can't compete with the hay case we got at work. I'm just keeping pretty tight, holding the vacuum for quite a while after you let out of the trigger, and it's running pretty qu pretty quietly. It's definitely quieter than the hay case. So let's just uh, power it up by the main switch and see if it remembers our temperature setting, because I know that old Ouya products have a bit of an issue with that. Or at least the old uh, 2900 series uh, soldering irons, they would just reset every time you powered them up, and that's a bit of a bother. And it's remember the temperature, so that's all fine and dandy. Heating up again. So let's just uh, give the other one a go and see how it behaves. Right, so let's give it a go. It also defaults to being off. And I set the temperature on this one prior while playing with it, so this one certainly remembers the temp. Heating up with just a bit more power, but that could just be variation in the idle consumption and the heater. I'd say that's the same. They are obviously using the exact same gun. They use the same connector, same heating element, same everything. So they haven't changed anything around aside from some stuff inside. There we go. It reaches temperature. It also seems to be going into... Huh? No? Yeah, it's going into that maintaining heat motor, that's obviously the same. And well, let's just uh, try the pump on this one as well. Ooh, the tip is definitely hot. Uh, this one's got a much louder pump. And the gun is making a slight rattling noise. It's probably, yeah, it's this uh, filter exchange. Uh, uh, the display thing, which is just a mechanical... Well, I'm actually not entirely certain what it is. It might just be spring-loaded and working off a vacuum. Yeah, but that one's making a bit of a rattly noise on this one. It's just going to be variation between different guns. So let's give it the uh, finger vacuum test. Yeah, this pump is a lot stronger. Yeah, this giant one just grabs onto your finger and doesn't want to let go. So if we just do this. Yeah, it's a lot stronger. So, that's a bit of a demo. There's certainly some differences going on, so let's just take them apart because these guys don't have warranty void stickers and see what the differences actually look like. The case is just to pop off with a few screws around the sides and top on both of them, so let's get him off and place pop the difference. So, they both definitely have some wildly varying mechanical design. What pops out most obviously is the vastly larger vacuum pump in the old unit compared to the much smaller one in the newer unit. In fact, I think this one might be a dual diaphragm pump, whereas this one might just be a single diaphragm pump. Hmm, that's a bit of a concern if they've chosen to cheap out on that. And it's also curious since the newer one seems to have a lot stronger suction. Another difference I noticed is that the older one has a much smaller transformer rated for 80 watts, whereas the new one has one rated for 100 watts. So perhaps we're just pushing more power into the vacuum pump to compensate for the fact that it's just a, a single diaphragm. Beyond that, we do have some difference in the cable looming. Uh, be, beside the fact that the cables are running on opposite sides, the older one seems to have something possibly mains related going into the circuit board, whereas the newer one just doesn't have that, although all the components are still populated. So we're going to have to examine that. I did look at the number for the PCBs, and they seem to be the same. We also have a missing connector up here, so we're going to have to find out where that leads. Ah, some minor reverse engineering later, I've figured out the difference between these two units. And it's that this one, the older one, runs an AC pump, whereas the new one 
runs on a DC pump. So, this connector, which goes to this little piggyback board in the back of a new one, is the pump trigger switch on the gun. And uh, on this one it goes to a board which just has uh, AC, a rectifier, cap, and an output going straight to the pump. Whereas on this one, it's going to some circuitry around here, but it essentially ends up down here where there's an AC output to the pump. Because indeed, one of these, one of the pins of these two green wires, which runs straight over here, uh, is going directly to the mains, and the other one is going to this uh, triac. So that has quite a significant uh, reliability consideration because this is just going to be a standard issue AC motor and uh, the, those tend to be extremely reliable whereas that's not always the case for brushed DC motors running off of 12 volts DC. So uh, I'd wager that uh, you have perhaps decrease rely the reliability of the unit with the Eurovision quite severely. I guess we're going to find out, only time can tell. But, uh, yeah, I'd put my money on this pump outlasting the other one many times over. Not only is it an AC pump, but it's obviously got two pump chambers, so it's going to provide a much higher quality suction. Now the pump in the newer one uh, does seem to provide uh, more suction, it provides a stronger vacuum. But uh, that could have something to do with the fact that the transformer in this one is rated for 14 volts AC at the pins which are going to the rectifier board and the pump is rated for 12 volts DC. Now if you rectify 14 volts AC you're going to end up with 1.41 times more voltage in DC so I'd wager this pump might be getting quite severely overdriven. Now, that's not a good thing, that's not a good thing at all. So, let's give that a bit of a go and see if we can measure the actual voltage across the pump. And this one, this point, this is just going to be 230 volts AC. Alright, we've got some probes shoved in there, so let's see what voltage this actually runs on. Now, a real design issue I noted was this unit is that... You can run the pump even though the unit is turned off, which isn't the case with the uh, to f the uh, older model. So this is really a bit cheap. There's just no active circuitry involved in powering the pump at all. Indeed, I wouldn't be surprised if all the current going to the pump would even be going through the gun itself, because I can't spot any transistors or anything on the actual uh, pump power supply. Well, let's check the voltage. Okay, fair enough, that's pretty spot on 12 volts, so they aren't overdriving it. But uh, that begs the question of whether or not they're overdriving the transformer instead, since uh, we really should be seeing more than 12 volts out of this setup here. Hmm. It's all a bit dodgy, this one. Yeah, I just took the pump control board out, and it is exactly as I feared. So we've got AC coming in here and here, and that goes straight to the rectifier with nothing in between. And then the output of the rectifier, one pin is going straight to the cap, the other pin's also going straight to the cap, but it's going to the switch connector, which is just going straight to the switch in the desoldering gun, and then coming back and going to the output connector, which is these two pins there. So that's not very good because you've got all the current to the pump following through the switch on your gun. So with this one, so there's a really big chance that you're going to wear out the switch. That's not good at all, is it? That's actually a really, really bad design. I I'm honestly very surprised that they didn't just uh, take the time to put a bloody transistor here. I mean, they really should have a transistor anyway to disable the pump when the unit is turned off. Jeez, I'm I'm disappointed. This is this is bad form. Very bad form. So how much current are we actually breaking with this tiny little switch? One and a half amps. Think this is rated for it? Hmm. Doubtful. And what about the peak start of current? 6.7 amps. 
That's not good. So if we leave that fiasco behind uh, and move on to have a look at the main board of the units, they seem to be absolutely identical, save for the connectors going to a different board on the newer model. They all have all the components uh, mounted, which they are supposed to have, uh, but the ports are labelled TI-701A++-1 with a subtitle of GJH120309. And uh, this seems to be the same board which is pairing the Audi uh, 701A++ model, which is uh, basically one of these, except it's also got a soldering iron and it seems to have potentiometers for adjusting everything. It probably has a different program in this uh, Atmel processor, which happens to be an Atmel 80 Mega 8L-8PU. So it's just going to be some generic micro. Nicely, it's situated in a socket, so you could hack this unit pretty easily if you wanted to, but really, I don't really see why you would. The software seems to work well enough. On the other side of the board, there's nothing interesting, just the solder joints, which look good enough, and the screen of the buttons, which are just uh, little VCR-style buttons, which uh, you press through the film of the front. Really nothing exciting. Cheapo Chinese capsule around might become an issue, because these units are intended to be on all the time, and you just put them in standby using the front panel button, so... Yeah, you probably want to use the main power switch when turning these on and off. Other than that, the build board seems to be pretty okay. Just generic Chinese components all around, but well enough laid out. So there you have it, uh, two supposedly identical units, of which one is sadly far inferior to the other. The new model just uh, has got all the things wrong that the old one got right, and how that's going to affect reliability of the unit is, well, remains to be seen, but uh, I really do not like the way they are switching the DC motor, and I do not like the fact that they've used a DC motor, and I do not like the fact that they used a single diaphragm pump rather than a dual diaphragm pump like they used in the old one. And just mechanically, you can see that the old pump is a lot bigger, and it runs a lot more quietly. So, yeah, I was hoping that uh, the new one would be better because it, the pump does provide a stronger vacuum which does a very good job at sucking the solder out, but it's a DC pump, it's a single diaphragm pump, it has this little pulsiness to the suction which is not uh, really good and uh, it makes the gun rattle, whereas the old, older revision just uh, has a much more uniform suction and it works pretty much just as well. It's a lot closer to the uh, Heiko 474, which it's copying. They are probably going out of production, so if you can, f if you're looking at one of these units, which I would probably suppose you should, they seem to be good enough. And certainly for the price of about 200 euros, they are at a price point that's hard to beat for what you get. But uh, the new one just does a lot of stuff wrong, and uh, I would, I'm going definitely going to modify that board because I'm not going to be switching 6.7 amps through the switch in my gun. Now, there is one good thing about the way the new Inverficient is constructed, and that's that everything's running off of DC. So, if you, for some weird reason, wanted a battery-powered desoldering pump, this is the way to go. Because you could basically just do for a pre-made laptop battery pack in here, perhaps some kind of 24 volt pack for the heat if you're really concerned, and you'd have a battery-powered desoldering pump. And these just use about, to, as you saw, 40 watts or so while running, so you could get a couple of hours of runtime out of it. Might be useful if you're on the road or something, but... Yeah. I'm still putting my money on that one. And here's a little piggyback board I designed to get around the issue of a more modern unit pushing over current for the pump motor through the switch in the pistol. So, what I did was I just uh, removed the connectors from the original board, I bridged the switch so that the pump would always be on if it was still connected there. Then I took uh, a really basic uh, 60 volt uh, 10 amp MOSFET and put uh, the connectors onto a little board. Uh, beyond that, there's really nothing on the board. There are There's one resistor going from the switch to the gate of a MOSFET, another resistor forming a divider, 
to the source pin in order to make sure the FET goes off. So there's a 10k to 1 mega ohm resistive divider here, and we've got a protection diode reverse polarized across the motor uh, in order to prevent back EMF uh, blowing the uh, transistor. And on the bottom side of the board, there's also a little tiny cap across the diode in order to prevent back EMF from the motor blowing the diode if it gets really bad. It's a bit overkill, but I'd rather not uh, cause any issues since the blowing the diode which would cause uh, the post plot to short out and there's no fuse and blowing the transistor would cause the pump to be on all the time so I think this board should work quite fine it worked on the test bench and I'm certain it's going to work in the unit however this does put forward a really 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 major issue with this unit which isn't present in the older revision so what you're looking at here is uh, the other unit, uh, the older one, is sitting in the time-controlled power-off state. Uh, you can set a timer, an idle timer, which uh, will simply turn off the iron if you've let the unit sit for an amount of time between one minute and an hour. And uh, on this one, if you press the button of the gun, bang, it goes straight back on and reheats the gun. Indeed, it seems to be in some kind of standby mode and you're back in business in no time. That requires the gun trigger to be connected to the main board. And it isn't. So that feature is entirely absent in the newer unit. So in order to get the newer unit to turn back on after it's been sitting for whatever amount of time you've adjusted, you need to press the front panel button. So if you set it for a 20 minute uh, off timer, every 20 minutes you'd have to press the on button, else it wouldn't reset. Whereas on this one, it resets every time you push the trigger. And to get around that issue, I've done a little modification to my hackboard. So we now have a connector here going to the front panel trigger. And indeed, if we take the gun, it'll go out of sleep mode. So, how this works is uh, it's very simple. All I've done is uh, I've taken a 10k resistor in series with the signal to the motor and uh, connected it and a ground from here to there. And it's possible to do that without frying the processor because they have been very generous in the componentry connecting this gun trigger. Because it goes straight into a 150 ohm resistor and then into 5.1 volt Cena diode. So as long as you have a current limited input here, a logic low is just going to cause this to react to a gun trigger, since the button in the gun is a closing contact. And since we're using an N-channel MOSFET to turn the motor on or off, uh, this uh, pin coming from the hackboard is going to be essentially connected to the positive rail of the motor which is about 20 volts idle through the 10k resistor and onto this pin which is going to be pulled down by the Cena diode forming a logic high. So it all works out quite well as long as you have a current limiting resistor. It's quite sad to see that you need this amount of extra circuitry to get around the limitation that oh you have placed on your own product by just uh, making it a newer revision. Because none of this would be necessary if this was just the old revision device, but we have missing essential features and a drastic design miss in the way they might handle the motor control. I'm very disappointed, but I suppose we did get a very fun project out of it and I did enjoy making the board, so I suppose it pants out, but if you were more of a business kind of person, this would just be unacceptable, really. And just to, because I'm pedantic about noise, I took some time to make a little muffler assembly for the output of the pump, because on this revision they had just piped the output of the pump straight into the atmosphere with no piping or anything which would partially probably cause some uh, sputtering of crap over the pump there with time and it was making a horrid noise. So all I've done here is take a couple of old spray can lids, tape them together, drill a few holes in them and fill them up with some rather porous uh, fibery fabric type of stuff and zip tied it to a transformer. 
and it works quite well. The unit is considerably quieter now, although it still has the issue where the vibration of the single pump is causing the entire unit to shake quite heavily, and I don't think that's something which can be reasonably addressed. So there you have it, a crash course in how to almost ruin a perfectly good product. And I'm going to have to say, if you're looking at buying one of these, you should be hunting for one of the old ones, because it's a lot, it's just a lot better. But if you're a hacky kind of person like me, the new one does do a very good job, as long as you take some time to actually make it work properly, and add the muffler. It does have the advantage of having a much stronger vacuum pump, and it has a much lower rotating mass as well, so the vacuum builds up faster in it. But uh, those really are the only advantages of the new revision. Anyway, I hope you found this useful, or at least entertaining. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Check it out. Linear pump control.